this is on the same topics as the last few videos. Um, so make sure that you look at the direction. They're going to tell you whether it is a circumcenter or an in center. Um, so let's look at number seven. So number seven, the directions say if P is the circumcenter of AB, find each measure. So every time that you read your directions, you really need to think about what it means. So as soon as we get this up. Okay, so let's talk about what a circumcenter actually is and then what criteria it has. So circumcenters are created by perpendicular bisectors. So P is your circumcenter, and it's where the three perpendicular bisectors intersect. So perpendicular means all of these are right angles. Bisector means that it's splitting the sides in half. So it splits AB into AD and DB. Those two pieces are congruent. AF is congruent to FC, and then BE is congruent to EC, and that's how you know how to solve this problem. So because you were given the circumcenter, you know that E is the midpoint, which means these two segments are congruent. If they're congruent, their measures are equal. So you can set up your equation, 13X minus 51 is equal to 10X minus 33. And then we've solved equations like this all year. You solve for x and then make sure you plug in to find bc, which is going to be the whole side length. Okay, so that is how you are going to do number seven. <clears throat> number eight is very similar. You still have the circumcenter. Okay, so P is still your circumcenter, so all of the same things still apply. You know that DP and PF and EP are perpendicular bisectors. You know that they bisect each side, so AD is congruent to BD. AF, again, is congruent to FC. BE is congruent to EC, okay? Unfortunately, that doesn't help us with this because you're given these two links right here. So the additional piece of information about circumcenters is that from the circumcenter to each vertice, so AP, PB, and PC, those green lines are all congruent. So based on that information, we know that BP is the measure of BP is equal to the measure of CP. And then you can plug in your value. So 11X minus 14 is equal to 6X plus 1. Okay, if you can solve for X, that means that you can solve for this side. You can solve for this side. But the question is asking about AP, which is this green line right here. And because they're all congruent, if you, saw, if you solve for BP or CP, then you know it's congruent to AP. And so that's how you would solve for number eight. Number nine is a little bit more involved. You gotta do a few extra things here, but all of the same things still apply. You're still given your circumcenter. So P is still your circumcenter. It's the same triangle, just with different measurements. So you know that these are your perpendicular bisectors. You know that these segments are congruent. You also know these segments are congruent. From your vertice to your circumcenter. So these green lines are also congruent, okay? So it's asking you to find DP, which is this side right here. So there is a few things that you're gonna have to do. First things first, we need the value for X. 
So we're going to go ahead and solve for x. If you know that these segments are congruent, you're going to set these two expressions equal to each other and solve for x. <laughs> once you get the bottom, so let's get all this. Once you solve for x, you'll be able to solve for this side and get that value. Once you have that value, then you can apply what you know about these measurements all being congruent to find this side. And then to find DP, you have your right triangle. So if you look at that triangle like this, the bottom is 2x plus 14. So once you get that value, you'll be able to solve for that side. Then you already have enough information to solve for this side right here. And so once you have both of these values, you can use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for this short side right there. Okay, just be careful in your Pythagorean theorem. Remember that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So in this triangle right here, this side is c, this side can be a, and this side can be b. So when you plug it in and you're solving for a, make sure that you are subtracting b squared from each side, so this would be a squared, to get your a squared value, and then taking your square root at the bottom. Um, so if you have more questions about this one, let me know. I really don't want to work it all out for you. I just kind of want to guide you. Um, so if you have questions about nine, find somebody to help you um, that's on the trip, or you can email me and I can try to help you a little bit more. Okay, so now we're going to go to the back, which is talking about in centers. So in centers are different. So we're going to go ahead and look at number 19. And we're going to talk about the difference that ends from in centers to circumcenters. Okay. So this tells you that P is the end center. Well, there's not a P, so I'm gonna go ahead and say that this is P right here. Um, so re rewrite K as P, okay? So an end center is not the same as a circumcenter. An end center is where your, where your angle bisectors intersect. So that means that this line, this line, and this line are all angle bisectors, which means this angle is equal to that angle because it's cut in half. And this angle is equal to this angle because it's cut in half. And this angle is equal to that angle because it's also cut in half. Okay. There are also some other criteria when you're talking about in centers. So there are lines that are drawn from the in center to the side of the triangle. Those side there are those segments are equidistant from the side, which means these are all congruent. So all three of these sides are congruent to each other and they are perpendicular to the sides. Okay. There are also some congruent segments. G, D, and D, I are congruent. E, G, and E, H are congruent. And H, F, and Fi are also congruent. So with all of that information, we're trying to figure out how to solve for this angle measure right here. So some things that you know, if these are if these angles are congruent right here, that means if one's 27, the other's 27. Same thing here. If this angle's 19, then this angle's 19 because angle bisectors split them down the middle. Okay. Then if you know this piece right here is 17x minus seven, you know that this piece is 17x minus seven. So there's a bunch of different ways that you can do this. Um, you can do this problem. We're gonna look at it as a whole triangle. So instead of looking at all the different pieces, we're gonna put these together. So we're gonna look at this angle 
as a whole. We're going to look at this angle as a whole, and we're going to look at this angle as a whole. So if both of these pieces are 27, then the whole is 54 degrees. Okay. If both of these pieces are 19, <clears throat> we're going to look at this whole angle as 38, which means if you know, you know, you're talking about one triangle, all angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees, 180 minus 38 minus 54. This angle right here is 88 degrees. Okay. You can do this many different ways. You could add 17x minus 7 twice and set it equal to 88. You could multiply 17x minus 7, multiply it by 2, and set it equal to 88. Because I know that this whole thing is 88, I'm going to go ahead and split it in half so I know each half is 44. And then I have an equation that I can use. I know that 17x minus 7 is equal to 44. But like I said, you can do this many, many different ways. So 17 x minus 7 is equal to 44 degrees, and you're going to solve for x that way. But if you found a different way and you get the same answer, then by all means, you could do it that way. Okay, let's look at 20. I'm not going to tell you how to do 20. Um, but we are going to talk about it. So once again, this one's labeled correctly. K is the end center, which means these segments right here are your angle bisectors again. So you have this half is equal to this half, this half is equal to that half, and then this half is equal to that half. Those, so those angles are congruent. <clears throat> you also know that these segments right here are congruent. So DI is congruent to GD. HF is congruent to FI and EG is congruent to EH. Okay, once again, those are not helping us right now. What we're given is, are these little side pieces right here. These pieces right here. These are your equidistant pieces. So we're just going to focus on those. Um, and from your last worksheet and from discussing this, we know that from the end center to each side of the triangle are equidistant. Those distances are equal and they are perpendicular. So if you know that two parts are equal, then you know that their measures are equal and you can set those expressions equal to solve for X. Once you solve for X, then you can plug it in to find Ki. Okay. We'll do this whole one together. Okay, once again, K is your end center. If K is your end center, that means that the distance from it to the sides of the triangles are all equal in length. So you know all of these are 18 and they're perpendicular. Okay, then you also know the distance from the vertex to that point on the side. These measurements are equivalent. So that means that 9X minus 16 is equal to 4X plus 9. Solve for x, so minus 4x minus 4x, 5x minus 16 is equal to 9, add 16 on both sides. 5x is equal to 35, divide by 5, x is equal to, that is y, 25. working. Sorry, guys, this is 25. My bad, my board's messing up. 9 plus 16 is 25. 25 divided by 5 is 5. So x is 5. Okay, so let's see if it's fixed yet. 
Okay. Unfortunately, it's not. So we're going to have to just deal with it. So x is 5. All right. So if we plug that in, 9 times 5 minus 16. 9 times 5 is 45 minus 16. You're left with 29. This should also be 29, but you can go ahead and make sure 4 times 5 is 20 plus 9 is 29 again. Okay. So you now are solving for dk. And if you see here, you have your right triangle. So you know, if you look over here and kind of separate it out, the short side is 18. The bottom is 29 and you're solving for your hypotenuse. So side is A, bottom is B. 18 squared plus 29 squared is equal to C squared. 18 squared is 324 plus 29 squared is 841 equals C squared. Add them together. 1,165 is C squared. Take the square root, is find C. So C is about 34.1 units. And if you add it here, 34.1, it makes sense. It ha It's the hypotenuse. It has to be the longest side. And it is greater than 29. So it makes sense. Sorry about the board. But um, so that is it on those. If you have any questions, make sure you ask me. There we go.